Now, this is the type of home network that you want in 2021. Notice the interface speed on this PC, 100 gigabits per second. On this PC, 100 gigabits per second. How long will it take me to copy a folder? 40 gigabytes of data from one PC to the other. Now to speed things up, I'm gonna use Robocopy rather than Windows File Copy. It supports multiple threads so I can copy data more quickly. How long will it take me to copy a folder from C, Users, David, Downloads, Large Files, 40 gigabytes of data to this shared drive in the temp directory on my server. So on the PC on the right, Windows, temp, nothing is in that folder. Let's press enter and see how long it takes to copy 40 gigabytes of data from one PC to the other. 6.6 .6 gig interview file has been copied. 12.8 gig movies file has been copied. 20.4 gig VMware zip file has been copied. According to Robocopy, that's the speed of transfer. That amount of bytes a second equates to 4.10 gigabytes of data per second or 32.835 gigabits of data per second. Now that's not too bad, I think, for a home network. Again, on my server, I now have 40 gig of data. If I delete that and go back to the client PC and copy that using Windows File Copy, I will get lower speeds but two gigabytes is not too bad for using Windows File Copy. I personally would use Robocopy because it's much quicker. I've got a problem that my network is too fast. <laughs> what a good problem to have. The network is too quick. PCs can't handle this amount of bandwidth. Now let's use iPerf to check the actual sending of traffic from one PC to the other. So on both PCs, I'll go to my iPerf directory. iPerf is software that you can download to do performance testing of a network. On the PC on the right, I'm going to start a server process. Server is listening on port 5201. On the client PC, I'm gonna send traffic to 10.1.1.0.2, which is this PC on the right, 10.1.1.1.0.2. So PC on the left, IP address 10.1.1.1.0.1 is gonna send traffic to the PC on the right, 10.1.1.0.2. In iPerf, we're connecting to the server on port 5201. That's the port number that the server is listening on. I'll set the length to 512K. That gave me the best throughput. Time out of 30 seconds, 18 processes will be used. We won't count the first three seconds. We are connecting from the client to the server. Try that again. Connecting from the client to the server. We're getting 49.9 .9 gigabits per second, 55 gigabits per second. In my test here, the best I could get was about 56.3 gigabits per second. This is not a network problem, this is a PC problem. The PCs can simply not handle the amount of traffic being sent into the network. So if I have a look at performance as an example, you can see that this is displaying network at 100%, even though it's not actually at 100%. You can see 55.3 gigabits per second was the summary. I'll run that again back in Task Manager, you can see it's showing 56 gigabits per second being sent, 46 meg being received. The PC is struggling with this amount of data. On the PC on the right, you can see 56.2 gigabits per second of data is being received. Once again, on PC on the left, 56 gig, 55 gig, this PC, even though the CPU is low, these are Ryzen 9 processors in these PCs. 
the PC cannot handle the amount of data probably to do with the bus on the PC or Windows or something else. If you have suggestions and ways that I can improve this, let me know. But in my tests, I found that even optimizing the PC, for example, under network and sharing center, going to adapter settings, these are 100 gig Mellanox Connect 4X network cards in the computer. You can see 100 gigabits per second. My PCs, even with a bunch of optimization, including setting jumbo packets to 9,000, couldn't handle more than about 56 gigabits per second. So limitation on the PC, I'll show you later in this video where I connect them back to back and do a similar kind of test. Didn't get much better performance than that. I've got a problem that my network is too fast. <laughs> what a good problem to have. The network is too quick. PCs can't handle this amount of bandwidth. So go to properties here, configure. On this side, Mellanox Connect X4, Jumbo Packets is set to 9000. I've enabled a bunch of other settings, such as network direct technology. I've played around with the buffers, a whole bunch of other settings. Best I could get was about 56 gigabits per second. I've also added a very basic configuration to the Aruba switch that I'm using in this topology. Right click on Windows Start, Device Manager, have a look at COM ports. I've got a USB serial COM port. In this example, I've downloaded PuTTY. I can connect it to COM5, the COM port that was picked up. Speed I'll use is 115200. Click Open, log in with my username of admin, no password, that's the default. I'll make this slightly bigger so it's easier to see. In this example, I've got an Aruba 8360 switch. Show run shows me the configuration on the switch. Very basic configuration. IP address of VLAN 1 is 10.1.1.254. The important piece, however, is that port and this port those are the two ports that my PCs are connected to. Show interface brief shows me that. I'll make PuTTY bigger, type the command again. Notice interface one slash one slash one running at 100 gigabits per second. It has a QSFP 28 DAC cable connected. Interface one slash one slash five QSFP 28 DAC 1 running at 100 gigabits per second. Those two interfaces have been configured with no routing. Rather than using routing, I'm just using simple switching between one interface and the other. I've set the MTU to 9198, which is bigger than what the PCs are using. That is the biggest MTU that I could configure the interfaces to use. So I've used an amount of 9198 bytes, biggest interface size. Very simple configuration on the Aruba switch. I'm basically switching from one interface to the other. PC1 is connected to this port. PC2 is connected to this port using DAC cables. This, however, is the kind of home network that you want. I really want to thank Aruba for sponsoring this video and sending me some cool equipment to demonstrate. 100 gig per second is the kind of home network that I think all of us want in 2021. Now let's see if removing the switch makes any difference. Spoiler alert, it won't. The PCs are the limiting factor here, but let me demonstrate a back-to-back -back connection. So one PC connected directly to the other PC, and I'll send traffic between these two PCs. Let's see if the results get any better. Okay, so PC on the left. I'll open up a command prompt. I'll go to my iperf directory. I'm gonna use the command iperf. We acting as a client, we connecting to the server. Server is the PC on the right. IP config shows me that the IP address of the server is 10.1.1.102. That's the server that we're connecting to. We're gonna use port 5201. The reason for that is when I run iperf on this computer, and I'll clear the screen. So iperf, and I make it a server. By default, it's using port 5201, so that's the port we'll use on the client. The length that we'll use is 512K. Timeout is 30 seconds. 18 processes will be used. 
and the first three seconds will not be taken into account. As you can see there, we're sending at 50 gigabits per second. 55 gigabits per second. But that's not too bad, 56 gig a second. This is again a direct connection from one PC to the other. PC on the left is the client sending traffic to the server on the right. We can see similar kind of results on the server. Notice 56 gigabits per second. The average there was 55.8 gigabits per second. Okay, so open up File Explorer. We've got this large files directory, 40 gig of data. I'll open up another window. The O directory is a share on PC2. So I'm connecting to PC2 to the temp directory on PC2, the server, on the C drive, nothing is in the temp directory. If I try and copy that directory to the PC on the right, the speeds I'm getting are about 2.2 gigabits per second. Windows file copy is limited. It doesn't use multiple threads. Not the best way to copy files from one PC to another, but there you go. That didn't take too long. I've now got those files on the right-hand side. I'll delete those files. And let's rather use Robocopy, which is multi-threaded, allows me to send the data a lot quicker. So I'll open up another command prompt. I'll paste my command in. Okay, no files on the server at the moment. Press Enter. We can see the file is being copied. So that's 6.6 .6 gig. On the server, we can see a test directory is there. We can see some files have been copied already. Movies has been copied. 20 gig file has been copied. That entire file copy took 11 seconds. 11 seconds to copy 40 gig of data from PC on the left to PC on the right. Notice it started at this time and it ended at this time. Now, according to this, the speed is that per second. So that amount of bytes per second equals 3.86 gigabytes of data per second, which is 31 gigabits per second. I was hoping to get closer to 100 gigabits per second, but that's probably an issue with Windows. It might be the motherboards on these computers, maybe other issues on these computers. These CPUs are Ryzen 9 CPUs. They are not pushed to the limit, but there are probably some other limiting factors. If you've got any ideas of how I can improve this, let me know, and I'll see if I can improve this in a second video. But hopefully you enjoyed this video. I really want to run my home network at 100 gigabits per second, but there are issues that I'm encountering. PCs can't support that amount of bandwidth. A lot of home devices can simply not use all of that bandwidth, but fantastic way to run a home network. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please like it. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and clicking on the bell to get notifications. I'm David Bombal. I want to wish you all the very best.